Hi, my name is Chris Inglis. I'm the product manager for the Column Hydraulic Tools in both Aspen Plus and Aspen Hysis. We'll be talking to you today about these tools, the new features and new workflows that revolve around them that have been released in Aspen One Engineering version 9. Column analysis in V9 of Aspen One Engineering is meant to improve an engineer's understanding of tire performance in all phases of the engineering workflow, from process development to equipment design to operations support. With the column analysis functionality, you can use Aspen Plus and Aspen Hysis 2, develop a preliminary design for trays and packing that is feasible for the given conditions and requirements of the whole process, understand the effects of upstream equipment on the tower performance, as well as the effects the tower has on downstream equipment interactively, evaluate multiple revamp options in both the tower and adjacent units, de-bottleneck process equipment during capacity changes, and troubleshoot operability issues in the tower. In the traditional workflow for design and rating of towers, process simulation is used for conceptual design, meaning that the process and the distillation units are modeled thermodynamically to understand the theoretical limits of the process in terms of the product purity, energy consumption, and operating conditions. When a reasonable base case conceptual design is achieved, the process data and transport properties are likely to be transferred to an external tool to understand the impact on tower size and internal selection. This leads to multiple iterations between process engineers, fractionation specialists, engineering service providers, and vendors to evaluate tower designs against the base case and off-design cases before an equipment proposal is finalized and the units are built and operating. This workflow is inefficient and the process impact is not evaluated early. It is difficult to understand the impact of the tower design in the context of the full process. With the new column analysis in V9 of Aspen One Engineering, hydraulics can be considered in the base case and off-design cases with intelligent insights provided by hydraulic plot visualization and messaging. Engineers are empowered to work with the vendors on tray and packing designs collaboratively and then use the actual equipment information to make models more rigorous. Columns are notoriously troublesome, energy intensive, and high capital impact units in chemical, oil and gas, and refining processes. A rigorous equipment model with visualization technology can give unit engineers and process engineers more insight into problems related to separation efficiency, utility usage, and unit stability, as well as show how the influence of hydraulic pressure drop propagates throughout the process. With column analysis, you can understand which performance limits are being violated and how to make operational changes to fix the problems or evaluate revamp possibilities. For example, if the column indicates flooding based on the current conditions, you may be able to evaluate both the process and cost implications of preheating the feed to reduce flooding or increasing the condenser pressure or retraying the tower by simultaneously adjusting simulation inputs and seeing the changes in the hydraulic operating plots interactively. Many people using current capabilities today for rough sizing before detailed design are unaware of the benefits of integrating column analysis with the rest of the process. Column performance can be affected by changing feeds, increasing or decreasing the capacity based on the market economics or equipment selection. Surrounding equipment requirements and performance also play into this. With the new column analysis in Aspen Plus and Aspen Hysis, all of these factors can be analyzed rigorously to reach both the column and process optimum. The new column analysis in V9 includes detailed graphical and interactive forms for tray and packing input with new support for tray modification to increase the range of operation. An interactive plotting tool simultaneously gives a simulation user insight into the performance boundaries of individual areas of the tower, the tower profiles relative to minimum and maximum limits, and a messaging system that gives design guidance based on departures from the feasible operating region. Not only is the workflow of designing and rating towers much improved in V9 with visualization and interactive results, but extensive work has been done in the fundamental hydraulic correlations that are being used to define the database of tray and packing types that we support. Aspen Technology has published a white paper on the results comparison and validation against both publicly available vendor programs as well as published experimental data. In the new column analysis in V9, you can use Aspen Plus and Aspen Hysis 2 create a conceptual model of the tower and the process based on thermodynamics, create an equipment-based model to add rigor to reflect the operation of actual trays and packing in the plant, use the hydraulic operating diagrams to understand the feasibility of chosen internals, and update the simulation with hydraulic results which propagates throughout the rest of the process. 
The workflows around column design and rating have been extensively tested by many of our top customers who see benefits in using column analysis interactively with the simulator to better diagnose performance issues, debottleneck, and optimize separation units in the context of the full process. Now let's take a hands-on look on these features inside of Aspen Hysis. This is an extended gas plant model in Aspen Hysis. What we're focusing on here is the dehydration process, which is downstream of acid gas treating and upstream of NGL recovery. The glycol solvent in this process is being circulated throughout to remove water from the gas distillate in the glycol contactor. The composition of the dry gas in the distillate must not exceed 30 parts per million, as shown in the composition form. In this demonstration, we'll be focusing on the column design and rating for this glycol contactor. Before moving forward, let's just take a note at the molar flow rate of the glycol moving through the system, which is shown here to be 252 kilomoles per hour. Now let's move into the column analysis capabilities by clicking on the small column icon next to the contactor on the flow sheet. From the internals form, we can define the sections for the column. With prior knowledge, we know that this column has five equilibrium trays. We can use the auto section tool in column analysis to define the geometry based on the vapor and liquid flow rates. Column analysis defaulted to using the simplest tray layout based on the vapor liquid traffic, which is a single pass sieve tray. By viewing more details, we can see that the layout and geometry specifications are laid out in a format that appears just like the process and instrument diagram for the column, showing detailed images of the tray internals. From here, we can define our own design parameters for the column design. Here, I will set a jet flood constraint of 80% jet flood and an aerated downcomer backup constraint of 60%. I can also define more details, like the system foaming factor and other proprietary factors that you may like to include. We can set this foaming factor to 75% as glycol contacting is normally between 70 and 80%. Examples for these factors are available within the documented F1 help. Now that we have a preliminary design, we can view the hydraulic plots. As we open them, we can see the red indicator along all stages showing that the column design is violating at least one constraint. From a glance, we can see that it appears that the maximum entrainment limit is being violated. By taking a deeper look into the messaging, we can see that on top of this constraint being violated, there is also a jet flood constraint that is being violated. By viewing the vapor and liquid traffic inside of the column, we can see that the current operation is showing much more vapor liquid traffic than the column can handle. Since we are in the early design stages, one option we have is to increase the column diameter for the given design. We can go into the form and change this to from the default value to 10 and a half feet. As we update this, we can see the hydraulic plots update interactively. Now, we can explore other tray design options. Switching to a ballast V1 valve tray layout, we can see the geometry form update to reflect the changes made. This new layout expanded the vapor range of operation. We can increase the number of valves per active area to 10 valves per foot squared to see a similar effect on the liquid operating range.
Let's explore a packing type column since this is a typical design option for a glycol contactor. Here, let's switch from a trade type internal to a packed type in the geometry form. The form updates with a given specification and we can choose to use the default diameter for a Coke flexi plaque packing. We will use metal for the packing material and 1.4x for the dimension spec. Finally, we can choose our design parameters, again choosing 75% for the forming factor, but also using one gallon per minute per foot squared as a design boundary for the minimum liquid rate. We can see the column internals correlate to reasonable operation away from the defined hydraulic constraints. After completing our preliminary design of the column, we can switch from the interactive sizing mode to a rating mode. We now have the option to export the calculated hydraulic pressure drop into the Aspen Heises simulation. Navigating to the results form, we can see that the calculated pressure drop now includes rigorous hydraulic correlations, as opposed to using a constant pressure drop along all the stages of the column. Now in rating mode, we're able to investigate if the given column design can be feasibly operated under different process conditions, specifically with a varying glycol regeneration rate. By doing some extensive analysis, likely using the HISIS case study tables, we can find the minimum regeneration rate to meet the given water composition in the distillate. From here, we can determine the lowest feasible regeneration rate for column operation. By inputting this value of 180 kmol per hour, we can see that the column now operates much closer to the minimum liquid rate limit. With this specification, a smaller pump can be used for the regeneration loop, which could lead to less utility and capital expenses. Please remember that the column analysis tools showcased inside of Aspen Hysis can also be used inside of Aspen Plus. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video around column hydraulics in both Aspen Plus and Aspen Hysis. For more information, please visit our website, www.aspentech.com.